Welcome back to Dark Souls. Now, if you're going to notice here that this boss has already been beat, and I've lost capture on a few episodes, unfortunately, so I'm kind of doing a Spark Notes run of what happened here. So, coming in here, this is uh, Yorm, and I started fighting him, and I wasn't doing really any damage to him. I was doing maybe 60s and damage. And he's a big guy with a big cleaver and was just wailing on me. And I just so happened to catch an item up here. And there's a little note here that says, Only a storm can fell a great wood. So, and actually picking up the item gives you this sword. This is called the Storm Ruler. Yep, Storm Ruler. I got this and actually used a um, homeward bone to get out of here and figure out what this was. So, it actually has a sword ability here. I'm going to charge it up, if I remember how. So, two-handed. And you actually have to charge this up. As we see here. And, using the ability, does that. Um, kind of a similar attack to the uh, Moonlight Greatsword in Dark Souls 2. Uh, same thing with Bloodborne, things like that. The Moonlight blade's been around for a while. Now the storm here, it takes about five seconds to get a full charge. Which having a big hulking guy on you to, to fight is very hard with this. But this sword took about a fifth of his damage down per hit. So it was almost necessary to use this weapon. Um, and finally I beat him. It took me a while because I even tried using the sword just to hit him with it and it wasn't getting me anywhere. I was actually not doing, I was like, why is this sword not doing anything? And I was very confused and very upset because I couldn't figure it out. Later on, after you beat this boss, um, actually there's one more thing I want to talk about here. So if you do the, your, the quest line correctly with uh, Sievert, he comes in here, you actually enter in and he's already fighting Yorm. Yorm is the person that he had vowed to, to get rid of. And that's his burden this whole his whole time, and I missed one encounter with him at the very beginning uh, when we first met him uh, in the undead settlement where we go up to see the giant with the bow that we call Dave. Actually, there's a little jump off spot that we actually meet up with him, with Sievert again, and I missed that one. So. Unfortunately, he wasn't in here, and I wasn't able to finish his quest line, so I was very depressed because of that. Because he was an awesome character. Uh, so we're going to go to the next area, because instantly it takes us to the next spot. And that is at... Do, 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 Dancer of the Boreal Valley. Alright, so... Beat the Dancer 2, it almost... Almost right after, I actually lost three episodes of content, and I'm very upset because of this. Um, Fighting the Dancer was probably one of my favorite battles. Uh, it was super fun. It was very methodical dancing moves, uh, and that's why it's called Dancer of Burial Valley. Uh, the attacks weren't too bad, and because of my level, I was able to defeat the Dancer fairly quickly, surprisingly. Um, I really had no issues fighting her and it's because of my levels. You know, most of the time at this level, people are in their mid to late 70s. You know, I'm in my mid to late 90s at this point. And it was a fun fight. It was a lot, a lot of fun. It was probably one of my favorite boss fights. Um, it had a lot of different move sets to it. And overall, it was just a really, really cool fight. Awesome music, too. It actually made me go grab my soundtrack for Dark Souls and pop it in my car because it was that good. <laughs> and we actually fought a third boss and again this is why I'm very very upset that I've lost this uh, content because this boss was probably my second favorite. And here it is. This is Anolando, and actually, the bridge that has the big spiraling staircase is right outside that door. So we actually have to run up here and get through these guys and a bunch of other nasties to come in here and fight. 
Now the now the Devourer of Gods is very interesting. It wasn't a hard boss, but it was very interesting in the fact that um, she actually had different move sets and different weapons depending on what form she was in. It was almost like a, a snake creature, but she would sometimes have a like a fire uh, scythe. Uh, just other magical attacks, a lot of fire, a lot of dark magic. And I, it took me a couple times on her just because I didn't quite get her move set down right. But overall, it was not a hard battle, but another fun one. Ooh, I never noticed those rays coming through. That's cool. And this wasn't like poison or anything. It definitely looks like it should be poisoning me or cursing me or something. Uh, but overall... I'm very upset that I lost, again, that I lost some capture for you guys, and I hope in the future that it doesn't happen, but, uh, you know, doing walkthrough style sometimes, it, it does happen, and I wanted to catch you guys up on, all, on everything I did. Again, this was kind of a quick spark notes of what, I, what happened, and you guys will actually pick up where we're in the smoldering lake, if I remember right. Uh, let's go ahead and go there. We're going to go to the banded tomb here. Alright. And this is the abandoned tomb. And down that way is Smoldering Lake. So, that's it. That was kind of the spark news. You guys missed out on three boss fights. And I feel bad because they were fun. So, hopefully you'll catch me in the next episode. So, thank you all for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you can, give the video a like. It helps me out quite a bit. Also, check out my channel. There's tons of other videos going on over there. Until next time, you guys stay frosty.